Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Uh, my name is Justin Rich. Uh, <coughs> I'm from a company called Ice Creates. Although, to be honest, I've only been there uh, about four or five months now. Um, I previously worked for C Tech Innovation, believe it or not. So you've heard that a couple of times today, I'm sure. Um, my background was really kind of working with organisations probably about 20 years now, helping them to uh, develop excellence, to um, uh, create improvements within organisations. I ended up at CTEC really kind of leading a group of consultants uh, undertaking uh, activity to help uh, companies innovate. Um, and so we worked with uh, previously the Technology Strategy Board, which is now within Bay UK. Uh, leading uh, knowledge transfer networks. We worked with the uh, University of Lancaster, University of Chester, and we worked with literally hundreds of uh, SMEs, not just across the Northwest, but across the country, in helping them to understand what we mean by innovation and how they can innovate. Um, and we built up quite a lot of ideas around how, how to help them. Well, one thing we did realize is that actually the level of understanding about innovation is within business actually very low. Um, in fact, we found that uh, within organisations, uh, we, we found maybe a third, a third, a third. So a third had very low knowledge of innovation, and you know, the questions they might ask us were, should we actually innovate, or what do you mean by innovation? Um, the middle third really kind of said to us, uh, actually, we kind of know what innovation is, but um, we're not really sure how to do it. So that was a question of, um, you know, they had the capacity, but they didn't have the capability. And then we came across the third third, which is, really the organisations that were innovating, but uh, generally what they were doing was taking maybe one product to market and not actually becoming repetitive innovators. Right. So uh, with that in mind, I really thought um, it would be useful to share some ideas with you around how I think that uh, organisations can improve the way that they think about innovation. Uh, and that's really what my presentation is about. So what am I talking about today? So why is innovation important? I'm sure most of you have a view on that. Uh, how can you think differently to make innovation more successful? And why do we need to engage with programs like the, uh, the Now Food Centre, for example, you, uh, Innovate UK, etc., um, to actually innovate and make uh, innovation more successful? Okay, so I'm sure you've all heard of uh, different definitions of what we mean by innovation, but actually um, there are a lot of different in, uh, definitions out there, and, and usually when you're talking to one person, uh, they mean something different to, to the next person you'll talk, about, um, you know, talk to about innovation. So really we're talking about all things innovation, we're talking about anything that's new that actually gets implemented to make a difference, okay? Something that actually gets introduced and helps to improve something. So it could be a product, it could be a process, it could be a service, in fact it could be anything really, okay? So, I think we've probably uh, covered this today. Um, th there is a, a, an imperative in, in the UK, across the world in fact, uh, not just an economic imperative, uh, but particularly an economic imperative in this country because uh, the rest of the world is catching up. They're actually getting better at innovating. Um, we're seeing a growing middle class across the world and they want things like nice food, cars, and all the things that we've got that they haven't had in the past. And that's going to affect the, our ability to have the same quality of life as well. So we're um, there are challenges of globalizations, uh, and globalization in terms of working across the world, working across Europe and so on and so forth. And, and probably the biggest problems we've got are uh, environments, we're working in our environment uh, beyond our limits, if you like. Um, we've got huge populations. There is some suggestion to, to believe that as this middle class grows, uh, the population growth will slow down. But uh, we, we are having a terrible impact on our environment. So we really do need to start to think differently. Um, I think the other thing is that the imperative isn't going away. Um, this isn't something that belongs to one government or another government. Uh, this is something that's here to stay, and particularly in Europe, uh, it's high on the agenda. So in terms of R&D, for example, uh, across the EU, they've committed something like 3% of GDP to be invested in innovation over the next, uh, up, up to 2020. So you can guarantee that that's going to continue to grow. Uh, so there's a high political impetus here, but also um, you know, within organisations as well, we do need to start to innovate. 
Uh, in terms of challenges to innovation, or, or barriers if you like, um, you know, innovation is actually very difficult to achieve, um, you know, particularly when we're talking to small companies. As I said, most of the companies that we talk to haven't been to business at the school, they don't have that kind of level of expertise in their companies, uh, and so you know, the whole concept of innovation is quite alien to them, and they do face a number of barriers. Um, and you know, when people say to us, is it a good time to innovate, it's absolutely a great time to innovate because there's a load of problems to solve, and actually there's a load of help for you to actually do that as well. Um, and as I mentioned before, Innovate UK is a great organisation, working with universities as well, um, it's going to get you that kind of help. So working to access finance, uh, to, to establish knowledge, and to identify problems that we can work towards and solve. Um, it's all very good stuff, but it's only the start, if you like. Um, I just wanted to mention really something around design thinking. Um, very often, and with traditional kind of definitions of innovation, we, we often really are talking about R&D, and that's really focused on uh, feasibility, really. Is something feasible? Sometimes we have an idea of what's desirable, but uh, usually uh, those things are left until later. Uh, and actually, when you're in a small company, um, uh, as I said, there are quite a few businesses that have one product that they want to develop and take to market. So they're very much focused on developing the feasibility of the science or the product or the service that they're concentrating on. Um, they then come to, through a linear process, um, to, to decide whether or not it's actually viable. Can they afford to make it? Have they got the capacity to make it? And so on and so forth. And usually, that can be a problem. So they start to lose traction at that point. And then, usually at the end, they come to desirability. Is it something that actually people want? And actually, uh, that, that's a big problem. And as I said before, there are lots of grants available for people to go out and do marketing, and do research, and to find out long before they invest in feasibility and viability whether or not what they're going to produce is actually going to be desirable. So in terms of design thinking, when we talk about innovation, we're really talking about the process of design. You need to take into account all of those factors uh, when you're doing that. Um, I just wanted to introduce you to a guy called Sir Ken Robinson. Um, if you've not heard of Sir Ken before, uh, I do urge you to go and have a look at uh, maybe the TED website. Um, they do TED Talks, for instance. Uh, fantastic guy. He's worked with uh, successive governments on education, in fact. Um, he's written a book called Out, 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 Out of Our Minds, which is all really about education and creativity and so on and so forth. Um, very interesting. You get time, go and have a look. Um, he says, uh, the human mind is profoundly unique and creative, but too many people have no sense of their true talents. And I think what he means there is that uh, actually there's a lot of untapped potential. Uh, because he's, he's an educationist, he's got a view that um, education has an important role in helping us to achieve our potential, but the process by which we teach our children and so on and so forth um, is really designed for another time, if you like. And I think what what he's trying to say is that actually when we educate people, we say there's one answer, and it's at the back of the book, and that's where you find it, and you need to learn the answer, and that's your pass the test. Um, and actually, what we really need people to do is to think uh, a bit more laterally, as Edward de Bonin might say. So actually, what we want people to do is actually think in terms of divergent thinking, okay? So when we mean, uh, what, what do I mean by divergent thinking? Um, I mean really um, the kind of thing uh, when you ask the question, um, how many uses can you find for a paper clip, for example? Um, you know, some people can come up with them quite quickly. Other people will struggle with this. Um, now, th this isn't creativity. This isn't the process of creativity. This is a process which is important to creativity because it enables us to, enables it, us to uh, think about different outcomes and different possibilities. So we might look at a product, for example, we might look at a solution in a different industry. It's already been developed about it as a solution in, in a different instance, for example. So, um, so in terms of thinking a, a, about a paperclip, for instance, you might think, um, you know, you might come up with 10 to 20. And in fact, when we've done innovation workshops in the past, we, we usually run this as an exercise, and usually people come up with about 10 to 15 and then start to struggle a little bit. Um, but they come up with things like hair clip or, you know, snowshoes for a mouse or something like that. Um, but really, really, uh, there are smart people who really are able to, to kind of tap into um, some unknown potential to, to think laterally. 
are actually able to come up with far more. Uh, uh, and it's actually quite a well-known phenomenon. So if you can come up with 100 ideas for a paper clip, or even 200 ideas, you know, you really are considered a genius. But actually, if you Google paper clip, ideas for paper clips, you will find that there are lists out there, a very, very long lists, you know, 250 ideas and so on and so forth. Um, it is possible to come up with a lot of ideas for paper clips. Um, but actually, the, the, the example that um, Ken Robinson uh, suggested was um, uh, a longitudinal study that was undertaken on school children. Um, it was to test their ability to think uh, laterally. Okay, so that it wasn't necessarily questions about paper clips, but they wanted to understand at what level uh, of children were able to operate at the genius level of, of lateral thinking. And they found three to five years, 98% of children were able to think to the genius level. How many do you think were able to think? that level five years later. Any guesses? Anybody? Five. 32% and then down to 10%. And actually they ran the same test with a group of about 1,500 uh, adults uh, and found the result to be 2%. Um, the results are in this book, break Beyond, so if you want to go and check that, please do. Um, uh, but it, it, it's quite surprising. You wouldn't expect the numbers to go in the other direction. Really. Uh, and actually, what we're doing is actually educating people out of thinking differently and be able to, uh, to think uh, outside of the box, if you like. And those are the kind of skills that we actually need in organisations to actually help people to innovate. So we're not, we're not saying that you know, education isn't relevant. It's highly relevant. But actually, there's, there's another aspect of innovation that um, uh, education that we need to take. So, when we come to executive thinking as well, uh, we, we often find that people are in business uh, to, to make choices and to make them quickly. Uh, and that's usually a good sign of a good manager is somebody that's able to make a choice, solve a problem and move on. But actually, in terms of innovation, uh, that, that can be a problem and that's only, only part of the, uh, part of the uh, solution. So in terms of design thinking, uh, as I've mentioned before, it's a different process. What we need to do is get, to get people to think differently, to think laterally, um, think outside the box. Uh, and you know, what organisations really need to embrace this approach and to start to think, how do they get people within their organisations to come up with new ideas and to think about problems? Um, I've given a couple of links there. When you get the, 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 the uh, slide um, show, you can follow those links. I'm not necessarily endorsing them. There's a lot of information out there on the internet about how you can create um, creativity within organisations. There are a huge number of sources around design thinking, for instance. Um, so if you're interested in any of this, go and have a look at it. Um, there, there is help out there. But uh, you, you often find that there is a problem with things like risk-taking, with having time to be creative within organisations, with having access to knowledge, and so on and so forth. And those are all things that you will get from actually engaging with universities engaging with things like the Now Food Centre, working with Innovate UK and so on and so forth. Uh, something else that's changing as well is, is really open innovation. Um, people often criticise the very linear nature of innovation, the way that we have to work through making sure that something is viable, something is feasible, and taking it to market. And actually, um, what, what has been found, and uh, Henry Chesborough is, is actually an expert on open innovation, written a number of books about the subject, he's found that about 75 to 90 percent of ideas within businesses that have actually been discovered and tested uh, don't actually go anywhere because they, they don't mean anything to the core business of that business or that business model. Um, and companies are now realising that actually um, if they invent something they can actually spin it out and they can sell it to somebody else or license it and, that, and that's actually the model that uh, CTEC Innovation operates on. They develop technology, they don't manufacture it take it to somebody else and somebody else takes it to market, for example. So uh, thinking beyond the boundaries of innovation, the process of linear innovation uh, is really changing and we really need to think differently. So actually, um, talking about linear models and talking about divergent thinking, uh, you know, th this is a typical model, if you like, and uh, you start off with a number of different ideas, you start to make the choices and you, you converge on a problem. Now I think um, 
you know, there's lots of models like this out there. Again, you know, something you can go and find on the internet. But uh, something that we've been talking about at the University of Chester and with a number of regional players in, in the Northwest is um, how can we make this easier for people? You know, what we're trying to do is do, to do some kind of future foresighting around what is it that, uh, you know, what are the problems within the industry? What are the things that people can start to work towards? Rather than just going out per se and helping it, uh, businesses innovate, it's actually get people within supply chains to come to problems and actually try and solve them. And you're going to see this as well in the IT industry as well. They will have uh, you know, days for the NHS, for example, where digital workers will come and, and try and develop apps within a day, if you like, and uh, try and solve problems and things like that. So uh, um, there's lots of innovative, innovative stuff going on. Um, but it, uh, equally, um, you know, as I said, open innovation is very important. So this, this is a kind of a permeable uh, approach going forward. You will be able to spin it, ideas in, spin ideas out, go and work with R&D companies, uh, you know, go and get investors. But it's unlikely that you're going to innovate in the future by not collaborating and not being open. Okay. Um, so why do you want to work with the Nafu Centre? <laughs> Connect with the community, network, potential collaborators, support open innovation, help address barriers to innovation such as finance and creativity, and explore challenges together. Okay. So that's me. Have you got any questions? Thanks.